Million Diamond. Hey, I'm Nick. And I'm Nat. And welcome to episode one of Nick and Nat's Happy Hour. On today's show, we have an awesome lineup. We've got some very special guests, including Ben Moore, a master beekeeper. We've got aggressive inline skater Keely Taylor, band photographer Chiawi, and folk indie artist Ben Whiting, who will also be performing for our solos. And I cannot wait for that. I'm pretty excited. Are you excited for I'm our so first show? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo, long woo, time woo. coming. <laughs> it is a long time coming. So, Rock on. cheers to that. Cheers, babe. And cheers to you guys. You were never part of this. Ben with us, Ben Whiting. Hey babe, how are hey, you? Hey. Yeah, How's up going? and coming. Indie, Indie folk artist extraordinaire. Who just got oh, back cool. from Byron Bay a couple of hours ago to come in and sit with us. <laughs> it's rough. Um, so you're going to be playing a song for us today? Yeah. Which will be awesome. Yeah, sure. What song are you going to play? Um, I'm going to play Private Island, which is a title track. Yeah. So notice between now, your new release of 2017, your last release was 2014. Why such a gap? I played in a I played in a band for before I started playing solo for yeah. ten years and then um, after I, that band split and we, I was touring all the time, like I still had that fire to keep writing music. So I just put music out under my name and then I didn't plan ahead or anything. I was just like, okay, what am I doing? And then I just messed around for a little bit longer and finally put a band together and, and then it just kind of happened and it felt like it was time to release again and kind of stick to it and just keep going. So. And can you tell us a little bit about your creative process? Like how, how do you write? I don't really have a method to be honest. I used to but now it's kind of one of those things you just ideas come at all stupid times so I've just kind of always carry around a notepad or whether yeah. it's my phone trying to write yeah. bits and pieces down and they're usually just blueprints of a song yeah, right. and then yeah just trying to snap into that flow state when I'm writing so I can be like oh what was that idea again and then yeah. you know that's usually how I work these days. I used to, you know, I can never just sit there and be like, I'm going to write a song today, and then yeah, it just yeah, never, yeah, it never yeah, works. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you like yeah. predominantly like write the stuff yourself and then take it to the band, or do yeah, you have yeah. jams together? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I, I mean, I have a, a few different ways of doing yeah. that, but usually it's like, oh, I'll take a song, just an idea, yeah. it won't be a full song, and I'll be like, just, just to feel jam it, out. it out. Yeah, yeah just I love that kind of writing. It's so good. Because you know, other people can bring so much to the yeah. table where you just like, oh, I didn't even hear that idea. So. Yeah. Do you ever like wake up out of a dream and you're like, I've got this song, but you're like too lazy to like write it down or yeah, record it? Yeah, like, I oh, remember that in the morning. Definitely. And then it's gone. The morning and comes like, and you're like, what was that song? Oh my God. <laughs> I actually had a dream one night where I was writing a song with Paul McCartney, which is really oh, bizarre. Really? Oh, really? Oh, dream. And I remembered the melody and the lyrics from the dream. Did you really? Dream. Wow. So I wrote it and I'm still Is it on this EP? It. No. No, okay. I should, I should <laughs> say yes. <laughs> Who are some of your biggest musical influences that influence your um, the songs you're writing? I grew up listening to like Sting and The Police and my family actually yes. loved a lot of reggae. Yeah. As well, so <laughs> nice. I grew up, like Bob Marley was a big influence for me. One of his most underrated things is his voice. Yeah. Like he's a, obviously he's a great lyricist, but Bob Marley's voice is out of control. Yeah. Like, he can hit those notes. So I think I grew up like listening to him and Sting, which are, you know, if you've heard my music, I have like a pretty high voice. So they were probably really big inspirations of trying yeah. to sing like um, when I was young. But. Yeah, I mean, a bit of everyone. There's lots of new artists that I kind of really dig at the moment, and then I always find myself just going back to the oldies. Uh, it's always it's always good. So you play mostly, you play with a band, but you also play acoustically as well? So you do a bit yeah, of both? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why I kept, just keep it under my name, so I can, you know, play with a band, and then if, you know, I have to go and do solo stuff or duo yeah, or whatever, it's get just it kind of... Exactly. you go. Yeah. So best gig moment, worst gig moment? I guess best gig would have been the tough this year when we did launch because it was I've never an awesome launch. Yeah. I've never played a show after I've been playing for a long time where like I had people actually coming to the show, not just my friends, you know, it was just like people wanting to be there. So that yeah. was a that was a surreal moment for me personally. Um, worst show moment. Oh, there's been plenty. So yeah. give us uh, where do we yeah. find That's you online? Your oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can find me on uh, Facebook, which is Ben Whiting Songs, Instagram at Ben Whiting yeah. Music. 
Uh, Alex just built a, an awesome website for it. Yeah. So, so benwhitingmusic.com. Yeah. He's worth it, <laughs> as you'll see when he plays for us. So what's the song you're playing? And uh, the, Private the, Island, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is the title, title track. Okay, title track. Yeah. and yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the song. Uh, Private Island, it's kind of, it's a metaphor for escapism. So, you know, everyone listens to music to kind of forget what's going on in their real life and just how music can be so nostalgic and take you away. So that's kind of the concept of Private Island. It's just about, you know, going away for five minutes or three minutes yeah. of the song just to, to get out of it. So, well, so thank you for coming thanks. on the show. No, and pleasure. Uh, thank let's you. Let's have a listen to you playing live. Awesome. Well, cheers. Cheers yeah. with the water. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Cheers. Awesome. Before you choke, step aside from the city smoke. If you don't try, you might wind up been in bro. Free your mind from rusty chains. Let the love live inside your veins. Wait a while, feel the fire burn in you for days. Come to the shore, we gotta fight good. Welcome aboard the private island. Come to the shore, we gotta fight good. Welcome aboard the private island. Carson, bring a sail. Leave the hassle on the dusty ship. We're waiting, waiting for no one else to come to the shore. We got a fight burning. Welcome aboard. Come to the shore, we gotta find the new. Welcome aboard the private island. Good morning everyone, we're here at the Walk of Mental Health, it's a 4K walk. Starting at 8am, that's AM, not PM. Not coping very well, I'm but not coping well, I'm a vampire, but you can see we've got quite a few people here. Can't really show it very well, but um, we're, we're ready made to it walk. On time. We're on ready time. to get our walk on 4 kilometers. Good start, not too bad. Do this. this is freaking awesome. 
welcome to the first episode of Freaking Awesome. We're reviewing products here today and the first product we're reviewing is Perfect Smile. Are you embarrassed about your broken, crooked, and missing teeth? Do you hide your smile because you're ashamed of unsightly gaps and cracks? Would you like to have big smile confidence but just can't afford the expensive dental work? Introducing Million Dollar Smile by Perfect Smile, the amazing removable, reusable veneer that instantly gives you the look of perfect teeth you'll be proud to smile about. Million Dollar Smile fits right over your existing teeth so you can always put your best face forward. The secret is the super comfortable, my thin polypropylene veneer. Simply soak it in hot water, press it on your top layer of teeth, and it custom conforms right over your teeth. Instantly, you can show off a million dollar smile. Now, a million dollar smile look is as easy as one, two. Just watch, put it in, and show off your million dollar smile. I think I look pretty perfect. What do you think? <laughs> show me your smile. Oh, you're perfect. <laughs> yes. All right, so, um, perfect smile. It says uh, three easy steps. And we're going to look absolutely perfect, which it's a little dubious. I'm not sure. I feel a bit like Freddie Mercury, really. Not very easy to speak either. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of conditions too with perfect smile. We've got some frequently asked questions <laughs> over here. Question one. Can I eat or drink while wearing perfect smile? Do you not wear perfect smile while eating? Sorry. Although you may drink, avoid hot beverages. So we could actually drink. Do you want to try drink? We'll try having a sip. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be bad. Cheers, babe. <laughs> mm. I think mm. maybe if I had a straw. I don't recommend trying to drink with perfect smile. It's um, no, not very... No, that's not going to work. Not very ladylike. Question number two. Can I sleep while wearing my perfect smile? Do not wear a perfect smile while sleeping. <laughs> Can I wear a perfect smile more than once? Perfect smile is designed to be worn frequently. Mm, I can see why you would want to. Um, and uh, <laughs> is it difficult to speak? This is my favourite one. Is it difficult to speak while wearing perfect smile? No. <laughs> <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> Although it might take a little bit of time getting used to speaking while wearing the perfect smile. Mm. But you'll be ready to go after a few minutes. <laughs> no. I think I'm ready. Ready to hit the town. We're ready without perfect smiles. Do we rate it? No. Do not rate perfect wow. smile. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay. uh, I'm gonna pull these out now. Oh, <laughs> this is also probably not the- Oh I my God. <laughs> Can we not, not the ideal look. look. <laughs> I just had like a big slime. This could be a problem when oh you go dear. out and uh, your teeth actually come off. I know you're left with these gums. Or if you go home with it, someone. It <laughs> <laughs> looks like I'm a 90 year old now. You're going to keep wearing it? I'm pulling them out. Oh, actually goodness. feels a bit weird without Ooh, that's it. That's really quite Anyway, old. do not rate. Ugh. No. All right. Bah, bah. Next thing we're going to rate. These are actually quite a lot cooler. So from Key Australia, we have the lovely Key sunglasses, which I actually called Quay for a long time because it just sounds cooler. I think and Quay is better. I think it's better too. It sounds but more. Apparently, fashion -y. it's Key. I actually really like Key sunglasses. I have lots of pairs of these, and uh, these are the High Key Key. <laughs> key. Melbourne, born and raised. Yeah. So tell us a bit about the backstory of of All right. Key. I have a little bit of information about them. Um, they were born on the roadside of the festival circuit, surrounded by music artists and festival goers, who inspired us to create notoriously cool, affordable sunnies for the non-conforming and free oh, non -conforming, people. Non-conforming, not conforming. Oh, if you're a non-conformist, this is what you need. They're meant to be fearless style. Would we agree? I think we should put them on. These are um, these are new colours that we've got too. Oh, these yeah. only just came so out. we're wearing the new range. Mine are gold and green, and mine are gunmetal and pink. What do you reckon? Oh. I rate yours. You rate mine? I definitely rate yours. These are freaking awesome. Those are freaking awesome. Cool. Do rate Key Sunnies, don't rate this colour. Overall, these are freaking awesome. awesome. Alright, on to our next. Next, we've got these cute little teddies. Look at these. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, Check I them like out. So we have Feisty Pets. 
They're actually the most popular toy of 2016. Viral rage on yeah. the interwebs. You guys have probably seen them. There was some viral video about the unicorn scaring some little boy. It was pretty hilarious actually. And they went just nuts after that. It's so hard to even find the unicorn. I had to get this from overseas, but these I got locally in a, in a toy shop. So you can find these ones for Christmas. Might be harder to find these. But the deal is they're so cute. Then they turn evil! Good for scaring ah! little brothers and sisters, if you have them. And I will always love you. Yeah, anyway, you get it? big kids, I like it. I rate these. I think these are cool. I definitely rate them. So I think A must for any household. <laughs> a must for anyone of any age. So these, these are freaking awesome. awesome. Well, that's the end of our freaking awesome reviews for this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. I, I think um, I need to put my gums back in at this point. Just for one last take. I just feel so incomplete without my perfect smile now, these days. Much better. Peace, guys. Peace out. decided to make... Ow! Oh, 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 I just got attacked by a plant! Oh, that was some kind of sharp cactus. I'm still crying. So Elle and I have decided to make a bit of a move to the front of the pack because we actually want to be the leaders. We don't want to be in the middle of the pack. Today we're here at the Cole Clark factory with the CEO, Miles Jackson. Hi Miles. How you going? How you going? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us through the factory. It's such a great setup you've got here. Three factories in fact. Yes. Yes, it's a great operation. And um, you guys are building some pretty unique guitars. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Cole Clark guitars? Uh, it was set up by Brad Clark, Adam Cole. We wanted to make a guitar differently, so we make a guitar the way the Spanish have been making guitars for 300 years. Uh, steel string guitars are, are made in a different way where you attach a neck. So the whole market is dominated by people who attach the neck. We do it the other way. So if, if you buy a Spanish made guitar, um, then it will have a Spanish heel and that's what we have. So it makes it fundamentally different. Now, on top of that, we've got a patented pickup system, which is arguably the world's most natural pickup system. It's a carved top, so it's thin in some parts, thick in other parts like great violins are made that way, they're not just a flat piece of timber. Uh, the bracing's very different, so you know our, our catch cry is built different to sound different and that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that, that is fairly unique actually, they don't often have the carb tops and all of that sort of thing, so that's, that's why they sound so amazing I guess, so much body. It's, it's a different sort of sound, I mean guitars made the other way are also great and they've all got different tones, you know, and ours have got a unique sound to them, you know, another palette. I guess that's why you've got so many great artists on board using your guitars. We had a look at the list. And, oh. Angus and Julia Stone, amazing, one of my ultimate favourites. Fantastic. Yeah, no, look, we've got some fabulous artists and they've been really good for us. As I say, Amplified, it's kind of second to none. Once people hear the pickup system, it's like, wow, this is knockout. I noticed the list of artists was quite large, going from Xavier Rudd to all sorts of bands, like there was Carnival on there and Living End and yeah, all sorts of artists. Yeah. Something that happened to you guys a year ago, you had a fire, can you tell us a bit about that? Well, 2013, so a little bit. But oh, sorry. <laughs> it says on the website a year. Oh, does it? Oh. Yeah, 2013, the paint booth caught on fire and the rear factory was completely gutted and a lot of damage, sort of about 1.5, 1.8 million. <laughs> it was. It was sort of nearly sunk us and it's been really difficult since. On the positive side, we've been able to rebuild and rebuild slightly better and bigger and rearrange the factory a little bit. So that's the plus side. On the negative, we weren't able to produce guitars for five months. So we were really on the back foot for a long time. So we're just really recovering now from it, you know. 
And what does the future hold for Cole Clark? I noticed you guys are sort of doing some exports overseas and things like that. What, what else is on the go for you guys? Well, we export to sort of 24 countries and that's pretty good. What we really needed to do was to crack the US and we decided to take over our own distribution in the US this year. So July we set up our own warehousing and sales team in the US. So. We operate out of Nashville, um, the Vice President of Cole Clark USA, he lives there, and our uh, warehouse is in Alabama. 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 And it's fabulous, it's great, so we are in the US. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you want to be, I guess. As well as Australia, of course. Absolutely, yeah, and Australia is the biggest market because it's our domestic market. Every manufacturer, their domestic market is their biggest market, you know, but we would hope that the US would, would pass that in the future, not too distant future, hopefully, so yeah. So Miles, tell us about this interesting contraption we've got here. So this is a plaque machine made in Berlin. It dresses the frets to within a 1500th of a millimetre. It scans it and then cuts the fret. It cuts it under the individual string path. So it, it hones in on a particular, might be the, the B string on the seventh fret. And if it's one 1500th millimetre out, it's going to want to fix it. It's a great machine. It does a fabulous job. There are no Friday guitars. It's, yeah, just the best fret dress you can get. And we are here, of course, on behalf of our major sponsor, Other Music, and they're going to have a massive range of your guitars on their website. So, guys, look out for that. Othermusic.com.au. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Miles, for having us in your factory and giving us the grand tour. It's been wonderful. Right. We love your guitars. We might have to, like, steal a few on the way out. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Now you've got to have a play. You've got to have a play. we Will do. Thank you so much. Cool. Photographer extraordinaire Eric Chowy Chow. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Thank you for coming. So, you are, I mean, in my opinion, certainly, and I think in the opinion of most other people, you are one of Australia's top live band oh, photographers. That's too much. But tell us a little bit about how you got into photography. So, I guess probably about 2001 and two, maybe around that time, I started taking a lot of, I guess, uh, club photos as uh, most of us start off with and yeah. progress that progressed into shooting bands occasionally and you know it was just natural because I was a muso for a long time. Yeah right, yeah. so you do a lot of local stuff but yep. you've also done some massive bands as well so yeah. can you tell us a little bit about the bands yeah. you shot? As you probably all know I followed Electric Mary for a long time, Yeah. Um, right back to I guess 2005 maybe a year or so after they started and ended up following Electric Mary till today uh, and along the way shot a lot of other bands and you know as I started getting recognised you know, people were asking me to shoot other bands and I got involved with Baby Animals a little bit. Became uh, friends with uh, Dave Leslie. Along the way, yeah, so Triple M picked up that, you know, they kind of liked my work and asked me to do Bon Jovi. Oh, news. really? That's um, amazing. Uh, who else did I shoot along the way there? Def Leppard. Yeah. Um, Buck Cherry. Yeah. So Ice you, House. you did the cover? Yeah, I did the cover for Ice House. It was a bit of a fluke. Got into uh, the Palms to shoot uh, Ice House. Uh, thanks to my friend Flea, g'day Flea, um, who does amazing lighting as well. And um, I was sitting in the middle aisle and a lady tapped me on the shoulder and said, get ready for the next shot. And, you know, I'm always okay when being uh, responsive, but always helpful to have someone say, hey, get ready. Yeah, so sure. I certainly got ready. And because I was in the middle aisle, when uh, Ivor came out for the next song, I was ready and, you know, shot a half a dozen and... Um, it's an amazing shot. I got to meet him after the show and 
this lady turned out to be, uh, you know, one of the uh, Inner Sanctum people and said, Ivor, you need to check this out. And lo and behold, a couple of months later, I get a phone call and said, Jowie, yeah. we'd love to use your photo for the uh, live album cover. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, that must have been like oh, it's so amazing. humbling yeah. to oh, get it's, um, I, yeah, uh, awesome. I pee my pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah, yeah, I'm I'm like, so yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah. So it was cool. And, you know, they, they've never had a live album. It turns out that that's their first. Yeah. Right. Ever life album, and you know, I'm proud to say that's my photo wow. on the album cover. I wanted to ask you for people starting out and things mm. like, what's the difference? Are you allowed to just go to any old gig and shoot, and then do you own that the rights to those photos, oh, or do you geez. have to? <laughs> is that a, a grey area? Yeah, or? that is this is the million year um, debate here. <laughs> um, well, two, side, two sides to that question. First of all, yes, take your gear, go and shoot. You know, really, reality is, you know, unless the band. Um, absolutely stipulates no photos. Um, go and take yeah, photos because right. it's accessible. Everyone's yeah. got a phone these days. You know, it's in their pocket. It's take photos. So, whether it's a, a smartphone photo or professional gear, at the end of the day, you're still taking photos. Um, as far as the ownership, um, I guess that debate can go on forever. But yeah. what I understand is, if you're the person that pressed the button. You own it. Yeah. yeah. You own the original. So, what about copyright. the likeness, though? Can can that artist then turn around and say, "Well, that's a picture of me. You can't use that." Uh, depends on where it's they shot. Don't like it. Yeah. Or, if oh, it's that's shot, a bad photo of me. Yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, if it's shot in um, again in the yeah. what's considered a public place in a pub, bar, uh, concert hall, or stadium, or whatever, uh, it's still your photo. Yeah. yeah right. Um, I, I think one of the biggest uh, argument about that is when the monkey took the photo, the selfie. And it was, did you see that? I didn't the, see the that. famous monkey <laughs> selfie. <laughs> and there was a dispute about wow. who actually owns that photo. And wow. I think at the end they concluded that the monkey actually owns <laughs> it. Wow. So. Yeah. Now tell us a bit about this. Yeah. Life's too short, go see a band. We've got Bones here, repping yep. it. Bones. I have one here, like just sexy. naked though. Um, so over the years, I um, obviously shot a lot of bands. <laughs> He's dancing. Loves is it. it he or she, by the way? It's That's... just an it. Oh, okay. So, it's no issue there. Right. She has no gender. Showing a little bit of boobs. That's all right. Um, <laughs> can do that. Yeah. So, I... Um, I to eat a little more. <laughs> a lot more. I look back at the 10 years at the time, so about 10, 11 years of um, bands that I've done, and I thought I'll just amalgamate this massive montage together. So in um, 2015, I think it was, I released my first Life Too Short Go See a Band because that was kind of my hashtag line. I love it, that's great. Um, so I ended up um, producing 100 of them through a, a um, website called Teespring. Mm -hmm. I put the link out there and within, I think it was three days, it was sold out. Really? And, wow. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. <laughs> and, um, But I didn't know a lot about T-shirt production at the time, and and that T-shirt with ten years worth of bands was these tiny little squares, <laughs> and by the time it was printed, you can't even make out who they were. Some of them you can. Yeah. Um, so, following year, year after, I've gone. I'm going to do this properly now. Let's make this, um, you know, a bit of a leverage also to promote the music industry. You yeah. know? So then I produced this one. I thought. Am I just going to sell it? I'm going to do something with it. So I decided to do a launch. Um, June last year, we had Electric Mary. Um, it's an awesome night. Yeah, it was a great night. Yeah. Headlining uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. There it is, 2016. And the next one will be uh, next year. I'll do yeah. another one next year. So mm. can people still buy these if someone wants to There's buy these? There's a few these? left. There's only a few left. So private get message me. Get them while they are. So where do they get them from? Shall just, we? Uh, just, just go to Instagram, probably the easiest yeah. way. So yeah. shall we photography and just message me on Instagram. Yeah. That'll be the easiest way. There you go. And can yeah. they buy prints as well? You've brought us some prints oh, I've in. got some prints to give away. I don't know how these we're going to give lovely. away. These are lovely. So yeah. I think to... Um, what about if we... We need to run a competition. What about what about um, <laughs> go to my go to my Instagram and repost and Shut tag up. yourself? Yes, <laughs> look at that. One of my favourite shots. Oh dear. Um, I'm actually I'm this. actually on here She's somewhere. She's on there somewhere. <laughs> yes. I am. I'm next to Susie Demarchi right here. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Right where my nipple sits. Prime spot. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't designed that way, but yeah. <laughs> sure. So um, we've, um, we've got a heap of signed Chowy posters here. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, what about if people choose their favourite Chowy picture from my Instagram? And, yeah, and um, repost it. Okay, repost yeah, it repost, with the tag yeah. Diamond Scale Media. Post, repost your favourite Chowy picture, and win a print. Uh, win a print. With Nick's face on it. You have to. Have, you have to actually tag Diamond Scale Media so we know you've done it. 
Awesome. Charlie, thanks so much Thank for you. coming in. Thank me. you yeah. so much Cheers. for coming. See you at a gig soon. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get some footage of Elle who's going to have to run to catch me because now I'm at the front of the pack. Ah, run Elle, run! I'm not built to run! Run! I your, wasn't built to run! Your boobs are bouncing oh. a lot. <laughs> it's not very comfortable. <laughs> sitting here with up-and-coming tattoo artist Santiago Lozano. Hey, Welcome, Santi. Hey, how are you? Good. <laughs> um, we're going to ask you a few questions about like your career and your tattooing and stuff. So, how long have you been tattooing for, Santi? Uh, well, I started when I was 15 years old in my country, Colombia. And then I started to do it again like a year and a half ago. And now I'm here with Naked Nuts Happy Hour. <laughs> Some of your biggest tattoo influences, can you tell us about them? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Uh, the biggest one is Samuel Briganti from Italy. He does uh, traditional tattoo. He is, I think, one of the most famous tattoo artists into the traditional tattoo. And also Isnar Barbosa from Dublin, Ireland. And he does neo-traditional. Which is your style. Yeah. That you define yourself as a neo trap. Yeah. yeah. But you used to do old school tattoos? Yeah, I, used yeah. To, I started doing traditional tattoos and, and then I moved into a neo -trad. And now I'm working to develop my neo -trad with a unique technique. Yeah. What's the unique technique? It's in process. Oh, Ooh, it's secret. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> secret <laughs> business secret down business. at All You Can Ink. <laughs> All right, um, we have one of Santiago's fine tattooed specimens over Ooh. here and we're going to be going over some of his work with you. So Jazz, what is it that you like about Santiago's art? I really like his style and I like supporting uh, up and coming artists and I've seen some of his drawings and I really like his work. So you've got a lot of his work on you um, and you're also getting tattooed today. You're going to show us some of the tattoos and what are you getting so, today? I've got five pieces from Santiago so far, uh, mostly on my legs, a shin piece, um, the back of my thigh, he's done some deer on my arm and a centipede on my shoulder. And today I'm getting my shin piece finished off huh? and coloured in. Are you excited? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Progress update. We're now. I reckon we're about a quarter of the way back. What do you think? Uh, well, we're making tracks uh, towards the uh, Herald Sun, so we've gone right around the river bend, or whatever it's called. The arrow. Cut. It is a walk for mental health. Mental health week. <laughs> Very excited to have our next guest on the show. Right now we have Keely Taylor, Skater Extreme. Thank you for having me, you too. Welcome, welcome. Very welcome happy to, to be the show. Here. And I've noticed that um, Bones seems to have uh, made friends with you earlier and you've stolen half of your gear. Look, he's my best buddy over here. <laughs> Uh, we thought uh, we'd use him to demonstrate some of the equipment that we may use. He looks very safe right now, I've got to say. <laughs> oh, look, he could be a lot safer, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you are an inline skater? Yes. So tell us about it. Tell us all about what that means, what you do, your gear. You've brought some gear with you. Well, these are probably the main things you need to be a rollerblader. These <laughs> probably <quads>. helps. <laughs> What I do is uh, aggressive inline skating. So this Does that mean is, you just go out when you're angry or? <laughs> it means that uh, <laughs> with aggressive inline, you do a lot of tricks. So grinds on ledges, rails, ramps, spin 360s, 540s. 
If you can, you can do a 1080. The best I've gotten is a 540. These particular ones that I use are a Seba, and uh, these ones have featherlight frames. Some Jenna Downing mills at the moment. They look like they've seen a lot of trashing, a lot of <coughs> use. I don't know if you can see that, but like these wheels are like, this wheel doesn't even move. Aren't they meant to move? <laughs> no. So you can go on poles. So, so these move, but these don't move. Exactly. Why? They're your anti-rockers. Okay. So when you go onto a rail or a ledge, yeah. they stop you from getting all caught up. All right. So I was like. <laughs> so it gives you a little bit more stability. I guess um, it's probably a good time to cover it. But speaking of getting unstuck, I've, I've tried a bit of inline skating in the past and like mm -hmm. I was okay, I was not like you, like I couldn't do like super tricks, but I had, I spent a bit of time on my ass, to be honest, and on my face and my teeth and stuff. Tell us about like the amount of falls, like what, what does it take, like how, how much practice, like if you want to, you know, jump a rail or go on a, do a 180 no. on a ramp or something, like what kind of fall percentage is there <laughs> to You're gear up for that? <laughs> <laughs> And you may fall multiple times. Have you yeah. broken any bones? No. What? You haven't? <laughs> no. Really? Yes. So I was going around a rink and I smashed teeth and like half my face and you doing all this extreme stuff you've never like... No. Wow. Probably the only injuries that I've had are a few grazes. What uh, made you get into it though? Have two brothers. So, of course, what do you do when you're a young sissy, you follow whatever your brother does. He got into rollerblading, I got into rollerblading. He went then to skateboarding, I went to skateboarding. Then in my 20s, I got into inline hockey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few years down the track, I ended up getting a uh, tear in my meniscus. So then I, I had a break from inline hockey and I thought, uh, you know. I'll just go extreme from here on. <laughs> and a friend messaged me about aggressive inline. I normally don't put myself out there very much. I'm normally, you know, a little bit shy, but yeah. I went there by myself. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I haven't looked back and I've yeah, right. joined a few competitions. So comps in Australia, so uh, what yeah, have you done there? So I've won the Australian Rollerblading Open. Round of applause for that. Um, That's insane. So if, if, um, if there's girls or guys out there that want to get into it, what do you recommend? Like, what are the places the to plus. start? Well, you know where you should start is uh, Bayside Blades. Another plug. <laughs> 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 they, no, they are fantastic. So um, they'll set you up with gear, set you up with lessons. So I guess with summer coming up, it's probably, you know, a good time to get some rollerblades and get into it. Do something different, like, you know, just get out in the sun. And... <laughs> Do you, reckon we should, do you reckon we should give it a go? I mean, yes. I'm a bit scared because... Absolutely. You know, you know what? You've got knee pads, yeah. you've got a helmet, you've got wrist guards. I want a mouth guard though this time. Well, that's fine. You can do that. <laughs> what have you got to lose? I fell teeth? off a... Um... I've got teeth to lose. <laughs> well, <laughs> can last I... note, favourite trick to do. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. <sighs> favourite trick right now would be the 540 because I've only just learnt it. And probably a top point which is basically top part of your skate is on top of the ledge mm -hmm. and then your other foot would be... Oh, I've seen Whoa. footage of you doing crazy yeah. stuff like this. Okay. So that, that is a, a, a top point. Right. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank Thanks you. for thank coming you out. So having me. Cheers to you, you Cheers champion. To you guys. Champion grinder. <laughs> that could be your title. <laughs> You're quite Ever. a champion grinder, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, hey, ladies. Kelly. <laughs> Thanks to Keely for coming out and teaching us all about inline skating. If you want to check out some blades, get down to Bayside Blades and uh, try the Seabers and stuff like and that. And if uh, you want to check out any of my videos, you can uh, go to www.panterravideo.com. Nice I know plug. I'll be going there. <laughs> I know I'll be going there too. <laughs> we'll all be going there. Thanks, Keely. Thanks, Keely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, uh, what are we doing here, Al? We're here for. We're checking out Dior's Fashion Through the Ages taken us on a journey right back to the beginning. What year was the beginning? Did you remember the beginning? I wasn't listening. I don't listen to these things. Elle's researching what we're meant to be seeing at the Dior exhibition. <laughs> don't stop us in, it's a secret. We know. <laughs> oh, we're so cultured. Um, if I pan like this, it looks like I'm naked, but I'm not actually naked. I am wearing a dress. It's like the only time you'll ever see me wearing a dress. The two last collections that Monsieur Dior did, so it was in, you know, half a year so and half a year. When it was he in died, 1946.
welcome to Show Us Your Tats, the segment where we talk to people with cool tats. And today we've got on the show Liv Pellman. Liv, Hi. thank you for Hello. coming. Hi. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So show us your tats, baby. All right. I'll help you. Help me, please. So how long have you been getting tattooed for? Well, uh, since I was actually 16, my mum um, took me uh, for Christmas when I was 16. Uh, to <laughs> get... Isn't that illegal? It is. <laughs> It is. She Back up me, there. <laughs> she took me under the condition, um, it was for a Christmas present, she took me under the condition that I never get any more. <laughs> that didn't work out, yeah. Mum, sorry. sorry. <laughs> there is like little loopholes if you do have a parent guardian. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, if you, right. If you, yeah, if, if your mum, like if your mum or your, your dad takes you and signs the thing, you're allowed to get it done. Can I and just so say then, my mum, you suck. So that's just a little shout out to mum. Why didn't you take me when I was 16? So show yeah. us some, show so us some of your tats. One, yeah. First one was uh, under the arm and it was the word family. Um, and it actually blew out and fell out and just, it ended up looking really bad. So yeah. I went and got it covered. So this one was an artist called Mick and he was at Purity yeah. on uh, High Street in Thornbury. Finished that right before I actually found my new artist, Ben White Raven, who is now running a Berserk in Heidelberg Heights. A great studio, him and his partner run that studio, and he's actually who, who did that baby. That is awesome, I Fully. love that one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a close up on that one. So tell us about that, so what's the inspiration yeah. so behind that? So basically, she's just meant to be symbolism for everything that I want to be. I obviously have always wanted to be kind of a woman of independence and of great stature and just free within myself, no matter where I am in life, no matter what I do and, and who I'm with. Um, I've always just wanted to be um, free. And that's kind of uh, where the birds come into it. That's why I kind of have my, um, my blue sparrow. I have about three tattoos for uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, really? Yep. I, um, Buffy, we love vampires. vampires. Cheers to vampires. Let's, let's just do that while we're here. Cheers Beautiful. to vampires. Love Buffy. <laughs> and that's um, one of my favourite tattoos. Pretty much all of my tattoos, they just tell my story. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's it's um, how I express myself. There's nothing in the world that will stop me from, you know, expressing myself and being mm. who I am and, and yeah, I do sure. that through. And know. for someone that doesn't have any tattoos yet and is thinking about going and getting them, mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them, like, going to get a tattoo? I definitely like, what do they say, need to prepare for? you know, if you have virgin skin, don't freak out too much because they, like, seriously, people egg it on to be, like, so, so painful. You just got one last weekend. I did. Show us, I Show us your new this, one. <laughs> this beauty. Right here. What does um, that symbolise? So for me, it symbolises a fair few things. Um, basically, it's symbolism of my year, the love that I've felt and, and the grief that I've endured, my relationships uh, that I've formed and that I've lost. The rose, um, for me, especially being kind of a, a dark pink rose, is my grandmother's favourite flower. She loves pink roses. So, you know, I've been looking after her this year and she's 99. And, and so that's, for me, it's a pretty special um, tattoo, but it symbolises my, my year. And my yeah, I love how you've got like a lot of symbology like, mm -hmm. relating back to your yeah. family that's really beautiful. definitely well again it tells my story yeah. you know like i just want all of my ink to kind of show purpose thank you so much for coming in that's and showing right. us your thank tats you for having me. love yeah. them love your yeah. love your ink and i love your overall look because you've got you you kind of got the whole Blue. stylized thing going on where yeah everything matches you're color coded i like yeah. that it's good thank Rockin you babe <laughs> let's cheers to that beautiful thank you okay so <laughs> what's happened here is somebody's put their cigarette out <laughs> Recycling bin, and they've set the whole thing on fire. So the security guards just pulled it out, and now there's a bonfire in the middle of the alley. Welcome, gentlemen, to the bonfire alley. <laughs> So our next guest is Master Beekeeper, Ben Moore. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for having me. So you're a beekeeper. Tell us what that means. Well, basically, I look after the bees. And obviously, I do produce a little bit of honey, but that's probably the least thing I do. I'm actually more about saving the bees. And that's such an important thing, because one in every three mouthfuls of food that we eat is pollinated by the bees. And now, that can be indirectly from the bees pollinating the canola that feeds the cattle. So they're just such important. Um, aspect to, to humankind. Now, Einstein said if bees go, four years, mankind, humankind, womankind are cactus. Really? So four years. So, wow. um, so I'm about sort of saving the bees and yeah, I think I'm saving the world. 
Yeah, I think you kind of are. <laughs> one honey pot at a time. <laughs> yeah, one honey yeah. So how, you know, how, how endangered are they at this point in time? Luckily, in Australia, we have the best bees in the world, and that's because we don't have a little parasitic mite called Roa destructor. And it's a tiny little parasitic mite, and that spreads diseases. Now, luckily, we don't have that here. Overseas, in Europe and America, they've got it, and they're absolutely decimating the populations of bees overseas. So, obviously, that media transpires to over here. Now, our bee population, if this mite comes to Australia, will be cactus. So there's that possibility, but at the moment, Australia, we've got the best bees. Okay. So, but we still need to save them. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. And what are some of the health benefits of consuming honey? Well, honey is an absolutely magical thing. Yeah. So it's important that we get honey from a beekeeper, not necessarily me, but just any beekeeper, and not stuff from the shop because they heat treat it. Now, this honey is what we call raw. Now, it's not raw in the sense of, like, say, milk, where oh, it's, you know, it's unpasteurised or anything like that. With the raw honey, it's full of all good enzymes, vitamins and minerals. And sometimes what happens is the honey starts to crystallise and that's where it goes thick. Now, some people think it goes off, but honey is the only natural food to humans that doesn't have a shelf life. Really? Oh. Yeah, so oh. it's the only natural food. So, so when it's crystallised, it's fine. You can still, yeah, so it's, you can, you can okay. still eat it. It's you just bad. warm it up yeah. to about 35 degrees. Oh, right. And then it'll go in that sort of pouring sort of consistency. Yeah. Uh, just make sure it's not heated. You see, I'm not a migratory beekeeper where I don't move sort of bees all around the sort of countryside. So I've got them in little what we call apiaries. It's like a little collection of bees. Yeah. So my honey is a mixed flora. So nutritionally, it's sort of a bit better because you've got all different types of nectars and pollen. So, okay. And that's why it's not just one specific type of eucalypt like, say, um, iron bark or right. red gum or anything like that. So it's a bit of a mixed flora. And obviously it varies from time, from year to year and, and so forth. So what's in flower and yeah. so, so that's why it tastes so. so good because it's all the mixed All flowers. the natural sort of stuff, yeah. exactly. So you don't just keep bees, you go and save bees from people's properties. Yes. So I've got some pictures of you. What is this? So that big massive formation is a swarm. Mm -hmm. And that's where the old queen leaves the parent colony and takes half the workers and then sets up shop. Now. Not everyone's keen on bees, but most people don't want to kill them. So what I do is I come and take them away. But this is a really cool scenario where these people uh, in Camberwell said, you know what, we've got bees in our backyard, let's keep them. So I've helped set them up in their hive for them to oh. look after. So, so they actually of, didn't want them gone. They were like, no, we've got that, bees, let's got just bees. Like let's, make let's, something. Let's roll with let's this. Let's start making and honey. Let's keep, exactly, <laughs> let's, and let's keep them. So, um, so I helped set them up with that. Yeah, and right. um, it's an awesome little journey. I mean, it's a cool little story. They've got some bees in their backyard and yeah, yeah. now off they go. So, so you sell like the full kits and everything so people yes, can set it up. And yes, yep, yeah, yeah, I do, Nick. So I do uh, help people with sort of getting the bees yep. and setting them up and, and doing all that sort of thing. Yeah, so right. it's so cool because it's such a massive diversity of people, you know, I get like young kids, you know, with mum and dad, you know, the ages of five, you know, is it expensive? Into it. Well, the initial cost is you need a bit, so you're looking at around sort of the $800, and okay. that's the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, right. Um, and so how long till you start actually getting like this kind of honey oh, so that you're going to have some more of? <laughs> well, it's interesting, with honey, we've got to remember that bees make honey for themselves. They don't, make for, it for they don't make it for us. No, they don't make it for us. <laughs> so, 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 it's so thoughtless. <laughs> so, but it, it varies where the bees are. So if they've got a diversity of um, flora, the mm -hmm. bees will do so much better. So in suburbia, uh, like where I am in Blackburn, yep. you, know, you get an easy 20 kilos of honey per year. Really? And that's leaving them probably 30. So Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. But if you're in the country, people think that I've got 1,000 acres in, say, Kilmore or something, I can... Now, I'm going to get lots of honey, but obviously with that lack of diversity of flora, they don't do as well. Yeah, so right. city honey is the best. So you get your money back pretty Yeah, pretty exactly. Anyway. I think it's, it's some fun, a hobby. Uh, that's right, Nick. <laughs> I think it's also, you know, pollination as well. You know, we've got a veggie garden. We need those things pollinated. Yeah, so right. it's more, you know, more than just honey as such. But you obviously get a sweet little reward. What about the stinging? Yeah. The, the, How many times stung. have you been stung? Have stung? you been stung multiple I would times at the say, same time? Well, probably just today because I'm a little bit slack probably anywhere from 50 to 100. Today? Today. Before you it, came here? Before I come here on the show. <laughs> so I now I barely feel on my hands. Yeah. Um, I don't get any swelling. I was going to say it yes, doesn't yeah. even look yeah, like Yeah, we can't no, see no, no, you can't, no, no. You look radiant. Maybe <laughs> that's, radiant, maybe yes, that's, maybe that's, maybe that's the, the key. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we'll find soon in the health stores. Like, Go and get your bee stings. Well, you actually can get bee venom 
uh, cosmetics. Well, there you go. There's a natural Botox. New MAC product. It is there. Be it's in a box. Be in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people get your products if they want to um, get them? So I sell it from home, the honey, mm -hmm. which has got like this old school honesty box system. So people just rock in. Oh, and you can really? rock it. That's 24 hours a day. Wow. So people come and go. That's so like 1950s it is, or yeah, something. 50s on it. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I have that. And I sell in a couple of shops because I don't produce a heap of honey. So I, I've maxed out at three shops. Marco's Cafe in Blackburn. We have Kerry Moore Butcher Shops in mm -hmm. Blackburn North and Cha 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 in Parkdale. Can they buy it online? Like if someone oh, you can buy it online, website? yes, So yeah. what's your web address? If yes, yes, yeah, so www.bensbees.com.au. So check it out. And I also do some Mr. candles B. and things too. So These smell yes. amazing. So I produce a little bit of um, wax, uh, beeswax, and that's nothing in there other than peel wax and really? a organic cotton wick. It smells so good. And, so, and I love this yeah. sign you've got. When you buy honey from a local beekeeper, you're helping a little girl get dance lessons, not the CEO of a big company, buy his third holiday oh, home. Support, support local. local. Yeah, support local. Local businesses. Yes, yeah. Support local. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Thank it's you so much. Amazing honey. what you do, you. and I'm glad you're saving the world because it makes me sleep better at night awesome. knowing that the bees are safe and that there's beautiful honey for us to buy. Thank Indeed. you so much. Thank you for joining us on the first episode of Nick and Nat's Happy Hour. I had fun, did you have fun? I've had so much fun. <laughs> it's been awesome. We've loved having all our guests and we hope you enjoyed the show. We'd like to give a massive shout out to our major sponsors, which are House of Maximon. Of awesome course. venue that gives us our home to make this show. Also, if you come down for your first purchase over the bar and say Diamond Skull. Diamond Skull. Code we'll word, get, Diamond Skull. We've been coming up with an amazing concoction for you. So come down and get your free drink and our other major sponsor, Other Music. So thank you to Other Music, who is a new online music store with the cheapest prices in Australia. And they're all about supporting Australian local independent music. With... Come on down and have a drink with me. Yeah, come down to House of Maximon and uh, have a drink with us some night. Cheers guys, <coughs> thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show. Like a fucking diamond. diamond.